and he was even able to to see numbers on the we had a number chart and an alphabet. He's able. I never coached my. I spent I spent about five minutes every day just going A B C D E F G, and I'd point to each one while I said it, and we, I'd say the alphabet song once. And then we do the numbers once. And having done that just one time every day, one day, he was about seven months old, he pointed to the number 10 and he said, 10. Like he reached over and he wanted me to, to put him up closer to the wall so he could touch this one number. And then he touched it because there, was a, a, there were the numbers in a, in a row. And he touched this one number that he was leaning forward to have me, because I was holding him, that he wanted me to walk him over to the wall to. He touched that number and he said, 10, <laughs> clear as day. I think I, um, I couldn't believe it. And basically, my, after that visit at the ER, where my son was taken away from me at one point because I was vomiting so badly. I was vomiting so badly I couldn't still hold my son. My son was taken from me at that point into a different room and I asked him where he was being taken. They said to see, and, and later after he came but was returned to me, they said that uh, Dr. Butler had looked at him. And then we got home and when we got home from that point forward, my son was never speaking the same again. And he was trying to speak, so it wasn't like I had traumatized my son or anything like that, or that he was autistic. I mean, he was he was definitely still trying to speak, but he would open his mouth and try to say these words and it'd come out all garbled. Like he couldn't, he could no longer articulate what he was wanting to say. And the last person that he saw before this happened to him was Dr. Malcolm Butler. And that's what I have for right now. I'm going to um, talk about the next thing that happened tomorrow.